In this section, I'll be explaining the shortcuts for stylus. This will include the most basic and essential hotkeys in the software, as well as those mostly used in one or probably other studios as well. Let's start with the common ones. Take note that these keys require you to press Ctrl at the same time. Now, you have your Ctrl A, which is select all. That means you get to select your entire canvas. Um, if you look here, look closely at the borders, press Ctrl A, you'll see these um, broken lines over here. And to deselect the entire canvas, all you have to do is press Ctrl D. And there you go, the border is gone. Now to copy, of course, Ctrl C, Ctrl X to cut, which I will demonstrate now. Be very careful because cutting your canvas and transferring to another frame, uh, things might go wrong. Just be careful when using the cut tool. To paste that, all you have to do is press Control V. And there you go. Everybody everybody makes mistakes, so everyone's best friend is Control Z, is to undo. So if you um, have a line there, Control Z, and if you didn't want to erase that line, just press Control Shift Z to redo the last action. Now, if you press Control num negative, that's how you zoom out. Control num positive is how you zoom in. And holding Control allows you to drag your viewport anywhere along. So if you zoom in too much, you want to see the other part of it, just uh, hold Control and drag your screen. Lining tools, you have your um, C is for your curve tool, over there. L is for your line tool. Um, the difference between the curve tool and the line tool, of course, um, is because line tools are just straight. <laughs> And X is for your pen tool, the freehand tool. E, of course, is for your eraser. And, um, of course, the most essential hotkey of them all is Control S, because you, you wouldn't want you to lose your progress in case of a crash or anything, not the stylus crashes. Um, so yeah, S, Control S to save. And that's the end of the basic hotkeys. The next few shortcuts are only applicable when you have your paint layer active. So right now we're going to press U to, if you pay attention to this box over here, we're going to activate our paint layer like that. Now if you press Q, you can cycle between your paint layer and your line layer. Our paint layer is this one, the thing we made uh, just now. So if you press U, Q, sorry, Q, you can cycle between both of them like that. If you press F, F is your bucket tool. Uses, you, can, you can use this in the line layer, but um, we mostly use this in the paint layer. S, just pressing S is your eyedropper tool. Wherever you, wherever you click, it's uh, gonna give you that color. Uh, if you pay attention to this box over here. And that's how the eyedropper tool works. Next, animation. One function key we use for the animation is the F10. This is where you find your resources and all your illustrated frames. See, here are your keyframes and here are the in-betweens we just did for those keyframes. So in order to go to your next frames, there are actually shortcuts for those, so you don't have to open your workspace view and uh, click the next frame, the next frame. That can be tedious. The shortcuts for that, comma and period. Comma allows you to go to your previous frame, over there. Uh, sorry, let's look at the frame numbers. So we're pressing comma right now, so we're going back in time, 24, um, yeah, 24 comma, comma, comma. And period makes you go to the next frame, just like that, 25, 26, 27, so on and so forth. We frequently use these when cycling between frames as well as checking the movement in general. Now, uh, the next batch is uh, mostly applicable when your light table is active. So this is the light table box, if you pay attention here. Now let's put a few frames there right now. Here, 28 is keyframe. Let's put 26 and 28 together. There you go. So now you have two frames, two, you've got two keyframes in your light table. Let's just change up the colors here so we know which is which. And there we go. Lower the opacity a tad. Okay, so now these are your light table um, layers. Of course, um, you'd want to view those layers when you're animating to check the movement as well, not just with, uh, not just go with going to the previous and the next frame. So, what you do is you just hold Alt plus two and three. Alt three allows you to view the previous keyframe. Alt two allows you to view the next keyframe, like that. So previous, next, previous, next. It's like um, flipping papers traditionally. And uh, lastly, you have Control T. 
Now, sometimes you want to hide your keyframes if there are too many things on the screen, like uh, when you're in a hurry or you're crunching. Uh, going over to your layer box and hiding all of them one by one uh, can be also a bit tedious and a bit of a nuisance. Now, the hotkey for that is actually just Control T. See? It makes you hide all your keyframes all at once, but only the ones in the light table, of course. Yeah, that's about most of the hotkeys to use for the ones in one or the ones in the in the animation floor. Anyway, on to the next section. Uh, we have another special tool called Move to Center. Remember that uh, that backslash tool we assigned earlier. This is where it comes to play. Now, a very essential skill in doing in-betweens is being able to determine the right spacing between keyframes. Stylus has a tool called, quote, move to center, unquote. This allows you to move any two selected layers in your light table and move them both to the center of workspace canvas. We do this uh, so we don't have to think about spacing too much. Now, basically, if you look at my workspace over here, we have two keyframes our previous and our next, known as B26 and B28. If you select any of these layers and then move them, this is the move tool by the way, combine any part you want to start drawing. Let's say you want to in between the eye. So you just merge them together and then you press backslash or wherever you assigned your move to center tool. And then you can start tracing and in between from there. Now, a good example would be like this. And there you go. Now, once you adjust that to put these layers back to the back to where they came from, their original position, just select both of them and press this second button over here. And they'll be back to where they were before you move them to the center. And if you play that, that's almost a very perfect in-between. And uh, take note, please, this only works if your timing is middle, like um, uh, like this one. This is a good example. This is completely middle. So the space in between keyframes is very even, so it's at the center of each keyframe. So that, that is the result of this tool. It makes things very, very easy.